Welcome everybody to another episode. This is the third episode um, from uh, Englewood, Colorado with Freedom Service Dogs of America. I'm Bob Calvert, host of TalkingWithHeroes.com. Keith Knights, Iraq veteran, behind the camera. And uh, we're here now at another location uh, with Brian Corbett. And why don't you introduce yourself again and describe what this room, big room we're in. Sure. So I'm Brianne Corbett with Freedom Service Dogs. I'm our director of dog operations. This is our training space for most of our on-site training that we do with our dogs. We do positive reinforcement, click and treat training. We want our dogs to enjoy the job they're doing, so we think it's important that they have fun while training. We reward them with bite-sized treats that they eventually are weaned off of as they're pleased with their client and become very familiar with the tasks that they're doing. Our dogs learn to peer from everything from basic obedience straight through their custom tasks. We get our custom tasks from a list we have, as well as from our clients' ideas. We are always open to having our dogs help our clients in new and different ways. Every individual is very different, and we pride ourselves on our custom training for each dog. This is Halo here, and we'll show you some, some commands that she can do for her veteran clients. Um, we'll start with her, her tug, because I think that's one of the fun ones. She can retrieve medicine or water from a refrigerator. Hello. Good girl. Thank you. Oh, very nice. Thank you. So for some of our clients, pulling a refrigerator open is too difficult or bending over to retrieve something is too challenging where the dogs can really help with this and increase the client's independence. When our clients have come to rely on a dog and it's time to retire their dog, we do always provide successor dogs for our clients. Our successor clients go to the top of our wait list. We want to get them a new dog as quickly as possible after their service dog has retired. Another fun thing our dogs do is retrieving dropped items. It's a very important task for anybody who needs to bend over and isn't able to do so. Um, picking up dropped phones is one of the most important things. If you need to call for help, it's important that your dog can get you that phone if you are unable to reach it. Hey, little wait dear. Yeah. You can see she's very eager and really enjoys the work she does. Hey, little take it. You good? Good girl. You're very nice. Thank you. Good job. Hey, little sit. So each client we work with has very individual needs and specific tasks that they want their dog to do in order to increase their independence. Halo here is going with a veteran and has learned the tasks to help him specifically. Did, did you have more questions, Bob? Um, you talked about opening, they can open a door? Yes. They can, is that, am I sure that I'm Yeah, here? they can also open um, handicap accessible doors by pushing the, the handicap buttons. So we have a kind of a faux button here that we just work with to teach the dogs how to target that specific location. Okay, Halo. Hey. Button. Halo, <laughs> button. Good girl. That was pretty good. Good job, dear. How long does it take to actually train them to be able to do that where it becomes part of their what they do? So it really depends on the individual dog. Some dogs are fast learners, and some dogs need a little bit more time to really grasp the concept of what you want them to do. Halo has been a very intelligent dog, eager to learn, quick to learn. But you're usually looking to teach a new task that it would take several months for it to become kind of innate to the dog to just do it very naturally. And we really work with our clients to be able to teach their dogs new commands. We ask that they teach their dog a new command two new commands in the first year that they have their dog. We want them to become a really great working team together and training together is a great way to bond with your service dog. If our clients' needs ever change, their physical challenges change, maybe they're able to walk with a cane today and in a few years they end up in a wheelchair, we do provide lifetime support and we'll help them train their dog on how to accommodate their new needs. That's, I think, a very important part of our program, the lifetime support that we provide for our clients. We want to be there to support them in whatever capacity they need us to. So they leave with a service dog, it might be too late, there may be someplace else in the country and there's some issues they need help with. What do they do? They just call you? Absolutely. So we talk with our clients regularly. 
get phone calls, email. We assist them as much as possible from a distance, but if necessary, we will go to our clients to teach them the new ways of me to work with their dog to get the, the use they need of their service dog. Great. Well, thank you very much. Where are we going next? Next, we will be going over to our placement class and meeting with one of our veteran clients and his service dog. Okay, great. Well, thank you for having us here. Thank you. Very much of an eye opener and learning experience. Um, well, once again, folks, we're here at Freedom Service Dogs of America facility in Englewood, Colorado, um, on talkingwithheroes.com. And uh, I know we want to thank. Karina, would you like to do that again, Michelle? Certainly. We, we want to thank Karina, who donates all of our dog food free of charge. Um, we want to thank all our volunteers. We couldn't do this work without them, as well as our other donors and sponsors and supporters. All right. And once again, here's website addresses that you can contact. And also, uh, I want to thank Colin, Bill, and Eric and their companies for sticking by me with Talking With Heroes for actually many, many years. I don't know what I would have done without them. So 